Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. Today we're gonna to talk about post-activation potentiation, the training science behind it, how we practically use it in the weight room. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and lay the groundwork with how the stretch shortening cycle works. As we land from a jump, or as we start to descend into a counter movement, we're going to be doing an eccentric contraction. We're, we're absorbing force, and then we're gonna be doing a concentric contraction when we jump up. There's a brief period of time between eccentric contraction and concentric contraction where we're in the amortization phase. This is the phase where the muscles are getting a signal from the nervous system to start to contract, but there hasn't yet been movement. That amortization phase is really important for the stretch shortening cycle. So the faster the eccentric and the faster we move into a concentric, the more the stretch shortening cycle is gonna be utilized. Super important concept for sprinting athletes, jumping athletes, any athletes doing change of direction work, anything like that. Now let's talk about the post-activation potentiation and how that fits in. If you've watched the size principle video, you'll know that high threshold motor units, type two A's, type two X's, are activated at high percentages of one rep max. So if we're doing loads of 80%, 85%, 90% of one rep max, we're activating a lot of our motor units, all of our type ones, a lot of our type two A's, and into our type two X motor units. When we're doing plyometrics, if you watch my rate of force development video, you'll know that those movements are really fast. Rate of force development is key, and we're not necessarily having enough time to recruit all of our high threshold motor units. Because again, it takes 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 seconds to actually get all the way from summating action potentials up to maximal force production through our muscle fibers. So while understanding the neurophysiology behind heavy resistance training and fast plyometric training, what would happen if we combine the two? Generally speaking, when we're pairing a high force with a high power activity, we can call that a complex. So the principle behind that complex, the science behind it, is that post-activation potentiation. When we have just activated those high threshold motor units in a heavy resistance exercise, and then we immediately go and do a plyometric high rate of force development type exercise. So for example, an athlete performing a heavy back squat would be using those type 2A, type 2X motor units, and then immediately going into that high force band assisted jump squat. That would be an example of a complex. This is a group fitness gym with like small plates, but you get the idea. Generally speaking, we're gonna try to match movement patterns. So a squat with a squat or a split squat with a split squat jump, something like that. So who should be utilizing post-activation potentiation and this contrast type training? This is really reserved for athletes who have significant experience with plyometric training and with heavy resistance training. So athletes should have at least two to three years of resistance training experience and at least a year of good plyometric training experience. They should not be in a growth spurt. This really is not a training method for youth athletes. This should be your advanced high schoolers and mostly into your college and professional athletes that are using this method. So to get in the science of post-activation potentiation and how this actually works, one of the proposed mechanisms is that the actin and the myosin become more sensitive to calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum in subsequent contractions when that contrast training is used. Another proposed mechanism is increased spinal cord synaptic excitation. In other words, our spinal cord is sending signals through the nerve to the muscle. So the action potential is moving from nerve to nerve through the synapses. We know that generally speaking, any plyometric training that's improving our neurophysiological system is improving transmission of action potentials from nerve to nerve. That can acutely happen from post-activation potentiation in subsequent sets. So although there isn't conclusive evidence on exactly how the post-activation potentiation phenomenon actually works, this is kind of what we think based on all the current evidence. It seems as though it works most effectively in muscles with a high proportion of type 2 muscle fibers. And it's generally accepted that complex training with heavy resistance greater than 85% of one rep max, followed by that light load plyometric is the most effective way to achieve that post-activation potentiation. All right guys, so hopefully that was helpful for you in understanding post-activation potentiation. If it was, go ahead and smash the like button. If you wanna learn more, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this. If you wanna learn even more and you want longer videos, go ahead and check out the Strength Conditioning Study Group on Facebook. Catch you in the next one, thanks.